I'm travelling back in time, deep into Australia's past, when the continent was only just breaking away from Antarctica. But it was no land of snow and ice. This was a place with a very different climate. It's a chilly morning on the wild west coast of Tasmania. Just down here is solid evidence that 50 million years ago, this whole region was covered by steamy rainforests, more like the Daintree is today. And paleobotanist Dr Greg Jordan is about to show me that evidence firsthand. This is a site and it's a fantastic site. It's one of my favourite sites of all. It looks like any other rocky hillside, but Greg guarantees we'll find fossil treasures from a period called the Eocene. So it has got stuff in it. The first one you break open. They all do. <laughs> oh. That's a good one. Oh, yeah. What we have here are fossils of the mangrove palms. They were growing right here. They were growing right here. <laughs> you know, it still smells like rotten egg gas. That's right. It's the, it's the smell you get from your walk when you're walking in mangroves, still from 50 million years ago. It was great, isn't it? There's nothing like digging up real fossils to appreciate how our planet's climate can change. 51 million years ago, Australia was on the Antarctic Circle, but there were no icebergs. In fact, the average temperature here was 12 degrees warmer than it is today. And the evidence of that climate is laid out on this forest track. Not bad for a few minutes' work. What do all these fossils tell you about what used to live here? Well, down here, this is mangrove palm, and that shows that this place is an estuary. But living right beside it, we have rainforest. We have all these rainforest species. Examining plant fossils like these helps Greg and his colleagues study an ancient Eocene environment that's relevant to today. How important are Eocene sites like this to understanding past climates? The Eocene is one that we really like because we have a snapshot of the world as a greenhouse, which, as we well know, is, looks like where we're going right now. And that relevance to today makes Eocene fossil sites particularly precious. Greg, describe the fossil deposit we're sitting on. How big is it? Well, fossil deposit, the exposure of this fossil deposit is just this area here. So it's kind of the size of your bathroom wall. In fact, the fossils themselves extend all through this valley and it's many, many metres deep and it extends 15 kilometres that way and maybe 40 kilometres that way. So it's gigantic. So in fact, there are huge numbers of fossils out there. It's just getting to them. And getting to fossils doesn't necessarily mean travel to remote locations. The perfect geologies for preserving fossils are also where we like to build our cities. A lot of capital cities are built on places where you expect to find fossils. They're built on big river basins, on estuaries. They're built on places of fertile soils, which are often on basalts, and basalts are perfect places for fossils. So, if you live in Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide or Brisbane, just metres under your feet could be a fossil bed, hiding crucial evidence about how the climate in your backyard has changed over millions of years. For paleontologists like Scott Hucknall, that can be frustrating. How much do we know about Australian fossils underneath Australian cities? Well, not a lot. I mean, when Europeans first settled here and we started to develop the place, there were fossils found deep in wells and road cuttings and so on. But once the infrastructure started to be built across the city, they were all capped and basically lost forever. But once you get those fossils, each layer has a fantastic fossil record of past climate. And so we can put all those layers together and understand how that climate has changed in the past and then maybe into the future. How might that help us in Brisbane here today? Well, it wasn't so long ago that this place was in record flood. So looking at the past is one way of being able to predict what our future will hold. But while Brisbane's fossil heritage may be of great value, digging up a city to find it is hugely expensive. Here in the Brisbane suburb of Geebung, they're building a road over this railway line at a cost of $200 million to the state and city governments. Graham Quirk is Lord Mayor of Brisbane. 
Well, the key to this project was get, getting down deep enough to create solid foundations. So we had to go below the 15 metre mark to meet the foundations we required. And it was while those foundations were being dug that Scott Hucknell received a photo by email. And all the heading said was, is this a fossil question mark? Nine times out of ten, when you get these emails, it's not a fossil at all. But this one was, and it was a beautifully preserved fossil fish. And when I opened up that email, and I was staring, and I was going, hang on, this is only 15 minutes away from where I work. So we jumped in the car and we came straight down, basically walked up, saw the guys who found it, and they went, oh, this isn't just one fish, here's another one, and here's another one. Oh, and there's these mollusks, and there's these fossils. Where did you find all this stuff? And the guys that were there were like, oh, is it interesting? And I was like, yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's going to revolutionise paleontology. And this is what they found. Five and a half tonnes of old mud flats from 55 million years ago. Now, I know it comes from old mud because when I heat it up and smell it, it smells like an old garage. And that's not surprising because this is the stuff of raw fossil fuel. It's oil shale and in parts of the world it's mined for oil, but here its value for science is very much greater. What's the quality of this fossil material, Scott? It's actually spectacular. The, the fossils are in almost all of the layers. And to give you an example of this, this one we just busted open. Look at that. Fantastic. Absolutely beautiful. That's a fossil fish. You can see the, the front of the skull here and the bottom jaw just there and the vertebrae leading off. Unfortunately, we're missing the other half, but as it splits open, you're the first person to lock eyes on this for 50 million years. How does that feel? It's really exciting, actually. When you split open a rock, it doesn't make a difference whether it's a tiny fossil or a big one. These are all exceptionally rare and beautiful specimens. And in just five weeks, Scott and his colleagues made some extraordinary discoveries. So one of the really cool fossils that we've found is this little bone here. It doesn't look like much, but to a paleontologist, this is gold. It's actually a limb bone from a fossil frog. It's right there next to a, a modern day limb bone. So very, very small. But what this represents is one of the oldest frog fossils we've ever found in Australia. Along with different species of fish, limpets and snails, the team has even found the vertebra of a five metre long crocodile. Back in the Eocene, variety was the spice of life. All of the species gives us this ecosystem of what life was like 55 million years ago. And that's really significant because it gives us a period, a snapshot in time of what Australia was like just before it snaps off from Antarctica and drifts northward. So what we inherited as our natural history, all of the kangaroos, the marsupials, monotremes, had their origins back at this period of time. So knowing what they looked like to begin with is really fundamental to the evolution of the whole continent. However, splitting the oil shale to find those fossils relies on luck. You can easily miss a fossil that might be just millimetres either side. Dr Andrew Rosefelds is working with a different technique. In the Jibang locality, you're getting the fish preserved in the oil shale. You can split it open and if you're lucky, you'll get an entire fish. But with a technique of using hydrogen peroxide, what you're getting is basically all the bone that's in that block. We place the oil shale into water, add a little bit of hydrogen peroxide to it. Hydrogen peroxide causes the oil shale to break down. So what you're getting in effect is the oil shale being returned to mud. And from that we then sift the mud looking for any bone fragments or any plant fragments that might be actually preserved in that mud. There's no reason we won't find evidence of flowers or seeds and we also will expect to find marsupials at some point in time. This would push back the fossil record for marsupials by several million years. But the Jibung find is made even more exceptional because not all periods of time are equally represented in that fossil record. In this vast archive, I've asked the CEO of the Queensland Museum to show me what they have from the Eocene. But remarkably little, actually. I mean, it would fit in less than one of the cupboards that we have in this huge warehouse site that we have here. So what's special about that period then? Well, the Eocene was a period which we know was really dramatic in terms of climate change. Um, it, was, it was changing from very warm to very cold and back again. Um, but we actually have remarkably little evidence of how and when that was happening, and particularly how animals were adapting to that. And why is it important to figure out 
climatic histories. Oh, look, um, we're, we're life on the planet now. We need to know how we, how we adapt to the, the changing climate that we're witnessing and we know will happen. Um, and so by looking at the past, by looking at the way animals and plants have adapted, we can extrapolate forwards and figure out how, as animals, we will all adapt, how the planet will adapt to these changes moving forward. Because we've done it before. We've done it before and it will happen again. The G-Bung find is of great scientific importance but it's also valuable in demonstrating how paleontology can work closely with construction companies. What we do is we try and partner with these fantastic companies. But the infrastructure that's built underneath our suburbs, whether it's a pass over or, or a tunnel, they all go through these rocks and those rocks are our ancient natural heritage. And although it's destructive, if we can actually partner with them and bring the material out of the ground and study them, we'll be able to understand what our past was like right here, right under the people that are living here. Well, the great thing about this is there's been no slowdown in the project. So the workers on site found what they thought was something interesting, contacted the Queensland Museum. And the great thing is the partnership has meant getting on with business and we've got a win-win outcome here. A win for science, for industry and for the G-Bung community. I've been here 41 years. Would you believe it? I found fossils down there. I wouldn't even dream of finding such thing like that here. So it's pretty good for G-Bug, you reckon? It puts you oh, on the map? Yes, oh yes, I'm so proud. <laughs> we got down in history with all our fossils. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> with cooperation from industry and the help of local volunteers, Queensland Museum is looking forward to drawing a more detailed picture of Australian prehistory and understanding how life adapts to the pressures of climate change. <laughs>